I'm James Rahutu, I'm a PhD candidate from the University of Minnesota and I'm affiliated with the University of Minnesota's Centre for Holocaust and Genocide Studies. This year I'm interested in two research questions. The first is on the use of images of atrocities by news organisations. Primarily I'm interested in the efficacy of this and the idea that we could consume African death and pain while sitting in the confines of our home, right? So what does that then mean for African victims and why is it okay to do this? But most importantly, who owns these pictures of African pain and what does that then mean for advocacy issues? The next one that I'm also interested in and should be starting to work on in the spring is the use of perpetrators as sources when news is being written and news is being collected. So. I'm interested in the relationship between quoting a perpetrator of a mass atrocity and the risk of the intensification of violence. In my prior work, it turns out that perpetrators are pretty media savvy and they know that if a Western news organization quotes them, it gives them the kind of cultural capital that they need that they then hope to change into economic capital during negotiation processes and hopefully score a seat in the new regime or the new government that should be coming up. It's important for us as Africans to be able to tell our stories but also realize who is telling our stories, right? Because whoever is telling our story owns that particular story. In my undergrad career, there was a, I realized that I kept quoting Western academics that were writing about atrocities in African countries but not necessarily talking to Africans. So the challenges in changing how we raise awareness about mass atrocities and thinking about the unintended consequences of how we've been doing it thus far.